5, verse 20, says, Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. This verse appears in the context of having to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account. We know that our bodies are mortal and that we will eventually have to fold up these tents and move into eternal dwellings. But this does not mean that it doesn't matter what we do while we are in the body. We will give an account for what we did while in these earthly vessels. There have been those who teach that the body does not matter. Everything is purely spiritual and so we can do whatever we want with our bodies but the body belongs to the Lord. Amen. He has purchased us, including our earthly bodies, at a great price. Amen. So our bodies belong to God and are not to be used for selfish and sinful desires. The body is for the Lord, not for pleasure. <clears throat> Those who live in the body only for pleasure will have to give an account to the Creator for squandering His gifts. And so as we remember the death of Christ at this table, we must think about the fact that our lives are not our own to do as we please, but we have been purchased by the body and blood of Jesus. And eventually, we must all stand before the Lord who purchased us. And we want that day to be one of glory and salvation instead of condemnation and sorrow. Amen. Now, the reality of coming judgment should be a sobering fact, and it could be a fearful thing. When our physical bodies and the rest of this physical cosmos have all melted away, we will stand before the Lord naked and completely exposed as we really are. There will be no place to hide from the Lord on the day of judgment. Amen. Many people spend their whole lives attempting to hide from God, just as the parents of the human race did after they sinned and realized they were naked. Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves with fig leaves, a woefully inadequate covering. And so men and women still try to cover themselves, hiding their shame and nakedness. We cover ourselves with material things, entertainment, careers, education, and all of the pleasures and distractions an affluent society has to offer. <clears throat> Not all of these things are inherently wicked, but people use these things to hide from God. Even morality and religion can be a man-made covering designed to make us feel that when we stand before God, we will not perhaps be completely naked and ashamed. At least we have been nice, decent folks. But all of our righteousness is like filthy rags in God's presence. And the only covering that God will find acceptable is the righteousness that he himself will provide. Amen. And this righteousness cannot be earned. It must be imputed through faith in God's only son. Jesus died so that we could be clothed with the very righteousness of God and stand in his presence without any shame. Being able to stand in his presence without shame or fear, having been completely accepted by him, is what Paul calls being reconciled. Because we have been reconciled through the death of Christ, we do not have to fear being condemned at the judgment. This reconciliation was accomplished by Christ on the cross. Instead of just writing off the human race and destroying us as our sins deserved, God sent his own son to take away sin by the sacrifice of himself. It was sin that separated us from God and even created enmity or hostility. We were all enemies of God, alienated by sin. We were hostile to God by nature, not wanting to submit to God and to his will. And we know that it never goes well for those personalities who choose to rebel against the living God. Satan and all of his demonic hosts were cast out of heaven and await the day of judgment and the lake of fire without any hope of being reconciled. But in his infinite wisdom, God has devised means by which those sons of Adam and daughters of Eve who are estranged from him might be reconciled. Amen. Even the angels who are still in heaven have never seen anything like the reconciliation that God has made through Jesus, and even they desire to look into those things that we are remembering here at the Lord's table. Now, having been reconciled through the death of Christ, we now live for him. Being reconciled to God means we are at peace with him instead of being hostile to his will. Before we were reconciled, we wanted to go our own way. We wanted to live for ourselves instead of for God. And for those who have not received this reconciliation that God offers in Christ, they are still living in opposition to God's will and are therefore alienated from him in their minds because of their sinful deeds. And these sinful deeds do not have to amount to murder or the base desires of the flesh. Many of those who are alienated from God might seem moral and may even be religious, but they are not living to please the Lord. Amen. The Lord is not 
the first thing, the first thought in their minds. They are living for themselves, and perhaps they just add the Christian religion to their lives just to ensure their personal happiness and development. But those who have been truly reconciled no longer think of themselves in this way. We have not been reconciled to God so that we can then just go on our way to live as we please, still separated from God. We have been reconciled to God so that we can have fellowship with him and can participate in his purpose and his work. And so the Lord's table reminds us that we are to live for the one who died for us. And so we must continually appropriate the reconciliation that Jesus died to accomplish. To appropriate means to make it your own possession. When we appropriate food, we ingest that food so that the nutrition is able to benefit our bodies. I think it is for this very reason that the Lord gave us something to eat in order to remember him. We must personally appropriate the body and blood of the Lord, which is done through faith, so that his death actually benefits us personally. There are those who teach the doctrine of universalism, that everyone will automatically be saved, and they ignore the fact that the death of Christ must be personally appropriated. No one can be reconciled who does not personally receive the reconciliation. This reconciliation has been accomplished. Now you and I must actually be reconciled to God. Let us not just talk about reconciliation as if it is some intellectual abstraction. Let's actually be reconciled and appropriate this peace with God. There are many people who long to have that inner peace but who continue to refuse to appropriate the reconciliation that God offers the world through the death of Christ. And no one will have the peace of God until they have peace with God. So as we come today to remember the death of Christ, let us indeed be reconciled to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the, the work of Christ on the cross to provide the means for our reconciliation. And we want to appropriate that reconciliation now. We pray that you would bless our remembrance of Christ, bless this bread and this wine, which represents his body and his blood. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.